Hot Mike with Dom Izzo. Really? Really, Dom? No. I like what Dom's doing. Okay. Dom Izzo. Jeez. Come on, Dom. What do you think I am, a magician? Yeah, I'm fired up, Dom. What else could I say? Absolutely. I was great to get on the field, and then Dom came up to me, and I'm trying to walk away from me. I just wanted to enjoy myself out there. Hot Mike. Great job. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of intelligent question about something. Is a hot mic. Hot mic. On the networks of WDAY. You know, if it's not about sports, I find it very hard to concentrate. Here's Dom Izzo. Dom Izzo. Good Friday morning. This is the final day of the week edition of Hot Mic on WDAY Extra on this 3rd of March, 2023, at least the sun is out, looks like everywhere, as we are ready to wrap up the week in style, apparently there's more snow coming, that's awesome to hear, setting up for the weekend, bunch of stuff going on, we're going to wrap up a couple of tournaments, a couple of more are going to start, it's set to be a very busy weekend, but that is par for the course. For this time of year. Good morning, everybody. I am Dom Izzo, host of Hot Mike. Welcome to our little show that we do here every and every day from 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra at Inforum.com. As we are ready for the weekend and we're getting out of Dodge, uh, Eric Pinnell and I are heading to Sioux Falls tomorrow for the Summer League Basketball Tournament, which actually begins today. Coming up here in a couple hours, they'll play the first game of the women's tournament for interested parties for the Bison fans. Uh, The game you're interested in is later today at 3 with Kansas City playing Denver. Uh, The winner of that will play the Bison women tomorrow down in Sioux Falls. The Bison women actually leaving uh, this morning. The Bison men will leave tomorrow uh, for they play Sunday night. And we'll have plenty of coverage from Sioux Falls. We'll outline that coming up later on in our show uh, this morning. Excited to bring all uh, all that coverage down there. I have a couple things to do first. And... The first is about (laughs) karma, fate, however you want to describe it. Because yesterday, as we began our state tournament coverage, we're doing two live tournaments at the same time uh, in the same city, which we haven't done since 2014 when the State A basketball tournament was in Minot. And we had the boys playing at the Minot State Dome and the girls were playing at the auditorium. And we went back and forth from two separate locations to bring you the opening day of the quarterfinals. This year, of course, we have the girls' state B going on in Minot and the state girls' hockey tournament going on at the Mesa Arena. Huge undertaking. Big deal. And I I tweeted out about our how proud I am of us as a company that I've been there from the start of us doing this and to see us get to where we're at now. Pretty cool. I, I had, and it's invariably it happens every year, every year. And it will probably double next year when we start doing two basketball tournaments at the same time that I had people say, well, I can't believe Hey, we got to pay for the stream and years ago it was free and, and such and such company. We don't have to pay for that. Okay. You know what? I, I'm I'm not going to debate the merits of that here on, on television. All I'll say is, I assume for people out there, for your jobs, you don't work for free. We 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 can't do that either. If you want to have the coverage, we this is how we do it. Second, I had a tweet come in saying to me that well, since Forumcom and WDAY have taken over, the the state tournaments have suffered, and we don't get nearly as much access as we've had. And I'll be honest with you, folks, I'm pretty thin skinned on that because I'm defending our company. And in defending what we do, I'm I'm been a part of it. I've been a part of the decisions of what we do, so I can tell you firsthand of what we have done, and what we plan to do. And it was about what is available now and available out west. And I would tell you, for especially like for WDAY Extra, if you're watching us, we are free over the air television. Like if you have an antenna here locally in town, you can find us on six three. We're available on Midco free. Over the air TV. So I get pretty heated when I see that and dispute it that we haven't provided more coverage. I can tell you since we started taking over the 
state tournaments, which was in um, March of 2014, so 10 years ago now. Um, prior to us getting it, I'll tell you for like for next week, the Class A basketball tournament, at least in the time I was here, and I've been here since 06, and I know prior to that, the opening day of the State A quarterfinals were not on television. How do I know this? Because I were, <laughs> I did the nightly sports. So it was up to me to find the get highlights of it. Either our friends in Bismarck helped us if it was out there, or we went. I remember, I think it was 2012 and 2013, they started streaming the opening day when the old uh, station that had it, the rights to it, um, would televise it. So in 2014, we had the idea to broadcast all of the quarterfinals. We did the boys and the girls. And we have done that since. Now, you can be upset about how we choose to put, provide them on television or one on TV, one on streaming. That's fine. I'm not going to tell people how to feel. You're going for it. But I can tell you that the at least the opportunities to have it on television were there. Hockey, the quarterfinals were never on TV. On boys, the boys' side. We've done that since 2014. Yesterday was a pretty big deal for us. The girls' quarterfinals have never been on TV. We have streamed them, but never have they been on television. They got that yesterday. They had whatever it was. Nine hours, ten hours of television yesterday, all on extra. And I know I had people thanking us for that, which was good. I, I just I dispute that things are worse off with us having it. I couldn't disagree more. And I think you saw it in our coverage last night of what we did. Now, this should tell me, though, because fate was ready to hit me in the head because I... Sometimes I engage on Twitter. Sometimes I don't. I'm trying to be better on that. I made a resolution not to be a dink sometimes, but when the mood strikes, you got to respond. And so I did that. I was feeling high and mighty about myself. And then I left work yesterday to go home to have lunch. And as we all know, the conditions outside, not great. Going down University Ave and... Gentleman that didn't look like he was going to stop, try to get on a university. I'm coming down. Doesn't look like I'm going to. He's not stopping. I try to stop. And the next thing I know is this. So if you saw me on university or thought that was me, yep, that was me. With the car up on the snowbank there. Not ideal. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Didn't hit anybody. Nobody hit me. Uh, to the Fargo police officer that came and uh, chilled out with me for a little bit. I appreciate that. Got towed out yesterday and um, still dealing with snow in the wheels. Probably hitting the car wash here after the show to get all them out so the car will stop shaking a little bit. Um, but if that was either karma or a fate's way of telling me to uh, knock it off, then message was received loud and clear on that. So... If you, I apologize if I held up your afternoon or lunch commute yesterday if you were coming down university between 1210 and 1245. That was all me. Okay, And from what I could tell, there was plenty of other people that had issues yesterday, even leaving the shack, um, coming back from EDC basketball yesterday afternoon, it seemed. It. So there was, uh, and there was still plenty. I, I saw it actually on, Univer or on 94 coming to work today. It was still bad. So. There is uh, my uh, reminder on that, that just take a breath. Everything's okay. Okay. Now we got that out of the way. We can start our show. And I want to say, first off, uh, big shout outs to our crew out at Minot yesterday at hockey and basketball. That is the longest day. Thursday is the longest day because there's four games. And they did a great job. I, I It was really good. I was able to watch a little bit of both of hockey and hoops yesterday and Things look great. Um, let's show you the late game last night uh, from the Girls State B in Minot. We featured Garrison and Kenmare Bobels. This was the 4-5 game. We visited with Matt Chase, the Garrison head coach, on uh, Monday's show as they were making their first state trip since 1999 to the state tournament. And a game that was tight, and I mean when I say tight, isn't tied, 
at halftime. And after that, Garrison put the proverbial foot on the pedal after that. This is a huge play in the game. This and add one that expressed the lead from six to uh, nine after the three-point play. And you could tell they were playing with a ton of confidence were the troopers here after that basket. Here they get a turnover. And as Chase told us here, he plays the same five players. They don't come out of the game. There's a drive and a basket there. I mean, they played really well last night to take a game that was com- that was competitive for a little bit and turn this into uh, a quasi route as unfortunately for our broadcast team yesterday, uh, we really didn't have any close games. Uh, that three, that really was the dagger there as Garrison was the only lower seed quote unquote. They were the five as they pull away and beat uh, Ken Mare Bobels to move into the semifinal round. So, this is what we have now for uh, tonight's semifinals, which you'll see live here on WDAY. Central Cass crushed Bowman County 61-28. to They got the first eight points of this game, which I watched that, and the game was, was basically over uh, after that. You have rugby, which was battling with Langdon area Edmore Munich for a bit and then was able to pull away in the third quarter and picked up the victory as they won 67-48 over the Cardinals of LEM. You saw Thompson, the top seed, handle Edgley Cullen Montpelier, 66-43. The Tommies now move on. As we mentioned, they'll get Garrison coming up tonight. That's the second semifinal at 8-15. So those are the final four that you'll see all live. Now, also a reminder, though, the consolation games this afternoon, Bowman County, Langdon area, Edmore Munich, you'll see that at 1 o'clock on WDAY Sports Plus. And I have to remind people, because I had emails and tweets about this, Sports Plus and Extra are two different things. Extra is the TV channel that you're watching right now. Sports Plus is our online stream. And it is separate. If you have a forum subscription, that is separate than the Sports Plus deal. Yeah, I understand it is confusing, possibly, and yeah, it is money, but that is that is our model. So just so people know, you can still watch the Constellation Games coming up um, later today. Also going on last night was the EDC Basketball Tournament as the girls took center stage at the Shack. And I was up there for the Loser Out Games, which saw Horace give Shanley a heck of a ride. Shanley ended up pulling away to win. North eliminated Whopping him. So Shanley and North will play in state qualifier games on Saturday. And the two teams they're going to play, I don't think anybody expected because the top two seeds on the girls' side got beat last night. West Fargo and Cheyenne were victors last night in the girls' semifinals. The Packers knocked off Red River, led by another Tremendous game from Mariley Simon, the NDSU signee, and Chloe Fow, the University of Mary signee, to beat Red River, who, remember, last year made the state semifinals. The Packers were up by three. They pulled away to win by nine, 57 to 48, as they'll get a date with Cheyenne, the Mustangs. We're going to talk about them coming up in our second hour as... We will have, for the first time, an all-West Fargo EDC Girls Championship game as the Mustangs had never been there before. And the Packers, which had missed out on state last year, bitterly disappointed by missing out at the state tournament a year ago. They lost to Wapitan. Now they are definitely in. And this affects the seeds now because Davies, the one seed, and Red River, the two seed, now have to go to state qualifier games, which means... You've got some heavyweight potential state quarterfinal games happening next week. Because let's just assume, as the WDA semifinals are later today, let's go out on a a limb and say that Minot and Century are going to win. Okay? Then 
you will have they will be the one and the two seeds, no matter how that will play out. They're the one and the two, right? Then you could have a potential a crossover, right? Let's say let's say that Century is the one seed, right? That they could potentially playing Davies in the first round as the four seed out of now that'd be the three. But let's say Red River is the four seed out of the East. That was a semifinal last year. And Minot, last year's state champ, the two seed, could play Davies in the first round, which was, again, that was a dynamite semifinal game last year. So that is unfortunate how that went down, but that is the uh, the way they format this tournament. Big win there for Cheyenne and West Fargo last night. By the way, special shout out to Mike Benson and the Packers. West Fargo ended a seven year state tournament drought last night by beating uh, Red River. That's crazy. 2016 was the last time the West Fargo girls were at the state tournament. They end that drought. That was with Akili Moten and uh, their standout players. So uh, the Packers are on their way back to the state tournament. And if you've not watched them play, and they'll have a good crowd. Cheyenne and West Fargo will both be well represented at the Shack next week. Uh, the Packers have some have some players. Simon and Fowl get all the attention. Solvay Seymour is really good. They are loaded. They have a potential to do something at the state tournament. So congratulations to the West Fargo teams. We'll uh, visit with Cheyenne in a minute. Real quick before we wrap up our opening segment, late last night, Minnesota Wild back in action in Vancouver against the Canucks as they had to leave town to the Wild because of the state wrestling tournament taking over the XL Energy Center, and Marcus Johansson making his debut back with the Wild after they made the trade. But they've got some dynamic players on offense. How about that? That is, Zuccarello purposely did that to Kaprizov, who tips it in, make it one zip. By the way, the Canucks wearing their early 90s uniforms is outstanding. Why nobody told me that this was a thing, I'm very upset. But those are awesome. That tied the game up at one. And then that's a dynamite save there going post to post. Mark Andre Fleury to keep this game a 1 1 tie. Little stick tap and love from his teammates. And the Wild then get this end to end. You don't want this guy alone. Kaprizov knocks it in his own rebound. That is his 39th goal of the season. The Wild go into Vancouver and get a much needed two points against a bad Canucks team. You got to win these games. Two to one is the final. We mentioned Kaprizov now with 39 goals on the season. He's been sensational. Three straight wins. 7-0-1 in their past eight. What is going on there? After a team that was scuffling. Now the Wilds can't seem to lose and have turned it on when they've absolutely needed to. Um, just looking at the up-to-date standings in the Central Division as we sit here on this th- uh, Friday morning. Dallas still has the lead. Three points over the Wild who are in second. Three points ahead of Colorado. That's what happens when you turn it on like they have over their last 10 games. Seven wins, one loss, and two overtime losses or shootout losses next to the Wild. That That's how, when you get on a streak like this, you can give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. And that's what they've done. They have uh, their next game coming up tomorrow night in Calgary, and then they're back home Tuesday night to play the Flames before they have to get out of town again because the Boy State Hockey Tournament is coming to Lexington Energy Center. Congrats to them. We are packed here this morning, as we should be with so much going on. At 9.35, John Ammerman will join us, head coach of the Moorhead Boys hockey team. The Spuds are heading back to state for a fifth consecutive year. Moorhead knocked off Rozo in dominant fashion last night. We'll visit with John coming up at 9.35. At 10 10 o'clock, Brad Schlossman will join us. It is the final weekend of the regular season in college hockey. UND still has a chance to move up in the standings, but they know that they're going on the road for the opening round of the NCHC tournament. Omaha is in Grand Forks this weekend. We'll preview that with Brad coming up at 10 o'clock. At 10.20, Kenyon Wingenbach will join us, head coach of the Cheyenne girls basketball team. We mentioned they made history last night. 
as they will play in their first ever EDC title game. Now they're going for their first EDC tournament title, and the number one seed will visit with Kenyon coming up at 1020. And of course, we wrap up the week at 1035 with my dad. He's got his best bets of the quote unquote the night and the weekend. Uh, I'm sure he's got some baseball chatter, of course, of what we saw this week uh, as well. So we'll do that before we wrap up the show. So, pack show. Thankfully, I'm okay. Car, we think's okay. Karma, undefeated still. We'll take a break. Hot Mike is off and rolling. We're back after this on WDAY Extra and in forum.com. Welcome back, everybody, here on a busy Friday. John Ammerman, Forehead Spuds, Boys Hockey Coach, coming up here in about 10 minutes' time. On top of all that stuff we showed you in our first segment, we had a bunch of college news that came down the pipe yesterday, most notably out of uh, the University of Minnesota. And this, honestly, folks, there are rare things that surprise or stun me anymore. This one got me. Yesterday, University of Minnesota announced that uh, the school and Lindsay Whalen have decided to part ways, which is a now fancy way of saying she was fired uh, after five seasons as head coach of the women's basketball team at the U. Now, Mark Coyle, the athletic director, in a press conference yesterday said it was a mutual decision, but if it was a mutual decision, then both Whalen and Coyle would have been present at the press conference yesterday. Whalen was scheduled to be there. She tweeted out that her emotions were uh, overcome as she was in the the elevator heading there, which can tell you to me that it was not a mutual decision. If it was mutual, then I think the emotions wouldn't have been as raw as they were. Um, This is a... Tough deal. Whalen's an all-timer. She's a Hall of Famer. Led the Gophers to the Final Four the last time they made it there. She finishes with a mark of 71-76 and 76 in her five seasons as head coach. This is the tweet she sent out yesterday. Uh, I'll be appearing and showing up for a press conference in the near future. My sincere apologies for not being there today as I was overcome with emotion in the elevator on my way to the press conference. I am a human being. And that that lends the credence that this was not a mutual parting of ways and I just I don't know why either teams programs just can't come out and say fired I, I don't I don't know if there is there some stigma with that now uh released I, I I don't know but apparently that that can't happen she added to this is I mean she didn't need to do this um I've shown up every single day while playing at the U playing for the links and coaching at the U add up the years Apologies if this hasn't been enough. I'll be available when the time is right, which she has done plenty. But as a legend, there's only one way for this to go. It's either going to end well or it's going to end ugly, and it ended ugly. And she could not transfer her basketball mind of how she played to instill that to lead as coach. I think that's as simple as that. And now this program is in a real interesting spot because – as people watch the the Bison Gopher game when they came up here in November, they have the tenth highest ranked recruiting class in the country that just came in. All of them native Minnesotans: Mallory Heyer, Mara Braun, Nia Holloway, Amaya Battle. Those you can't get any better than that. They all from the Twin Cities that decided to stay home and play for Lindsey Whalen, and now in this era. How many are going to stay? That, I mean, all of them. Braun out is let is clearly number one. And she had her choice of going wherever. She chose to stay and play for Whalen. That's topic one, uh, which is totally related to who's going to be the next head coach. The University of Minnesota has never hired a man to, hire, to lead the women's team. But I had several people say to me, well, Aaron Johnston's just sitting there, the South Dakota State head coach, who's been obviously with the Jacks for 29 years. AJ's done everything and then some at SDSU. He's won a national title at the Division II level. Clearly, he's owned the Summit League. The Jackrabbits just finished a perfect regular season. They are far and away the uh, 
unanimous favorite to win this weekend in Sioux Falls, that if there was a time to go, this would be it. If Mark Coyle, the athletic director, wants to go down that road. I don't know if he does, but that will bear watching. I'm I'm really intrigued on what this hire is going to be. I really, really am. Because you look at, and AJ's got a record of, he has just harnessed the Twin Cities to get amazing players. Amazing players out of there. He's got an, I mean, he's got a laundry list. And not even just the Twin Cities. He's got everywhere. He's got Fergus Falls represented. He's got Albany on his team represented. The Meyer girls, Paige Meyer's fantastic. She's awesome. And went into our backyard to get Ellie Kalbeck out of out of Fergus. Selland. Oh, I mean, just the list goes on and on. If they want to go that way. As for why it didn't work with Lindsay Whalen, I I think, like I mentioned, that her amazing basketball mind wasn't able to translate over to as a player as, to as a coach. And it's too bad. I mean, it was a home run when they hired her in 2018. They won 21 games their first year. Last season, they finished 15 and 18. Of course, they had 11 players leave. Scalia, their top player, Sarah Scalia, is now starring in Indiana. By the way, Indiana is what the number two team in the country prior to their loss to Iowa. The, the far and away considered the, the heavyweight next to Iowa to win the Big Ten. And I was talking with a couple coaches about this yesterday. The Big Ten for women's basketball is as good maybe as it's ever been this year. Look at the teams there. We Indiana's amazing. Iowa's got Caitlin Clark. Michigan's really good. Ohio State's really good. I think they're going to get seven teams into the tournament. So that's the challenge. That, I mean, granted, it's there with both Gopher basketball pro- programs right now. I even get started on the men. But really intrigued to see where this search goes and who stays. Holloway, you'll remember the stud from Eden Prairie didn't play all season because she tore her knee last summer. Higher from Chaska, we saw play. Amaya Battle's really, really good. And, of course, Mara Braun, who was injured and didn't play against the Bison, which is probably a good thing because I think she may have led Minnesota to win that game. That's the kind of player she is. Um, that's the one you just have to keep an eye on. So... Be really intrigued to see what happens there at the University of Minnesota. Lindsey Whalen done after five years, and uh, I'll be interested to hear what she has to say when she does speak. We're due for a break. We'll take one now. We come back. More Ed Boys hockey coach John Ammerman will join the show after the Spuds win another section championship in dominant fashion last night against Rozo. Hot Mike rolls on on a Monday or Monday on a Friday morning on WDAY Extra and Inform.com. Here on a Friday, get my days right, Friday morning here on WDAY Extra in Forum.com. Last night, we started to get the boys' state hockey tournament filled out for Minnesota. War Road with a big win as they knocked off East Grand Forks and Thief River Falls. We'll recap that coming up as well in our second hour. Brad Schlossman actually was there covering the game, so we'll uh, visit with Brad about that. And in eight Double A, the game was moved to East Grand Forks. Of course, it was supposed to be played in uh, Thief River on Wednesday. Of course, the weather wasn't going to make sure that didn't happen and was moved to East Side last night. And boy, Moorhead did not mess around with Rosa, a team that they had beaten during the season and playing once again for another uh, section championship. And boy, what a game this was for the Spuds. They raced out to an early lead. It was 3-1 in the second. Had another there on a one-timer. Made it 4-1 to at that point. This game really got out of hand in the second period as it went from a competitive game to a laugher. Mr. Heck of a Ryerson comes in and scores. Goes upper 90 on that shot. That's just a fabulous goal. That made it, at that point, 5-1. to And, boy, things were 
going nuts at East Grand Forks. Great turnout by the Spud fans last night. They poke at another one here in the dying seconds of the second period. That made it 6-1, to one, blowing the kiss to the crowd, which I'm sure our next guest, I don't know how he felt about that, as uh, they had running time. I don't think I've ever remember running time for a Moorhead Rozo game, but the Spuds win the section championship for a fifth consecutive year. 8-1 to one was the final over Rozo last night to send Moorhead back to the XL Energy Center, uh, which the state hockey tournament will begin next Thursday down in St. Paul. It's always great to visit with John Ammerman, the head coach of the Moorhead Boys, who joins us here. Uh, feels like it's been too long, buddy boy, to see you, but congratulations. And uh, you you played in this. Do you ever remember running time for a Moorhead Rozo game? Uh, parts of that there. Um, hopefully... The store, uh, the score reflected uh, the the game in its entirety. The second period, but silly question: Does this ever get old? So, on winning, on going back to state, you've done this now five years running. Yeah. So, A successful couple of weeks. You obviously had some defections before the season started, so you had some adversity before everything, even the year, got going. John, how did this team kind of rally around that? Did they rally around that? Um, you know, they- You know, now out of I think it's eight years for you to go to state man what is it what is the secret sauce that you found to be able to do this and win that section championship game uh, we as a staff um, have have understood especially on the defensive side of things, what's important and, um, and how to prepare. Um, I, I know players or our kids that there are things that we do a lot that probably isn't the, the most sexy in practice. Um, but the point that we can be competitive by the end of the year, um, you know, you can't 
you can't teach. Like we have Kai Weigel who has been outstanding for us. Aaron Ryerson has scored straight at the end of the game. Um, and then, then we have some younger guys that are filling some roles too. So I don't know. Little things and uh, each team has its own identity. It's been fun to figure that out. John Ammerman joining us, Moorhead boys hockey coach. I'm seeing you one last night, the Minnetonka, Maple Grove, Andover. These are, I know you played a couple of them already. These are the familiar faces at, at the state hockey tournament. I, I know I ask you this every year, but Playing them over Christmas, does that give you a window of what you could potentially see next weekend or next week? Yes. And, and was, uh, you know, like I said, we took our lumps early in some of those, these teams. Yeah. And uh, a lot, um, you know, it, it's one thing to tell. Same thing. Um, it's just um, and uh, we have guys feeling good about themselves, and and I think our. Uh, outside of our goaltender is this so this is your 10 for us this is by far the closest team we've ever had mm. and that's that's one of those intangibles that you can't quite put your finger on it but you just kind of feel it um we don't we go for each other and it's really really fun on the bench to see how much they care about one another and you can just kind of sit back and, and see them work off one another and, and the momentum grow. Um, I think that's one thing that, you know, go back pocket that they really compete for one another. And um, I, I think, although I want to see early. Okay, so I was already going to bet that you guys were going to be in the eight thirty game, but that's a isn't that the four five game, right? So there's no chance you're playing at eight or nine o'clock at night next Thursday. Yeah. yeah. I think we've talked. side yesterday and we were talking on the phone just about different results and where people might be at and uh, us and from that have advanced in the tournament wow. and we just <laughs> obviously a, a section like section six for example, where Edina comes out of, they have Wyzetta, Benild, and Edina in right. the same section. That's that's three top ten teams. So, um, you know, I hope that we have a chance, and, and we'll see what happens on Saturday. But uh, I know it's fun to see whoever we get to play. See, I gave Kraft a hard time because they end up getting the eight thirty game, which is like you're you. How many times have you played that one? Even since you've been coach, yeah. yeah. that you really do start time no. which makes it even more complicated but um the plan and but uh with tell you, uh, the goofiest and the i i mean they they the uh you got a different attire for state you maybe you know a hat something like that you bring it out for the state tournament you thought about it come on man no. you bruce it up you and, and yeah i i don't have any of that kind of flair <laughs> um no obviously the kids and the fans and the alumni get geared up for it and uh, it's really 
to get down there. Um, I know, uh, I believe it's, is it War Road? They got Hockey Day next year. Have you guys been contacted at all about potentially another Northern team? Is that, has that been on the radar at all or no? Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens over the summer. How exciting though is that though, John, coming back up this part of the, the world again, I, you obviously been a part of it when you, you guys played in St. Cloud that, uh, uh, it always seems like it comes down to the Twin Cities. It's nice it's coming up back uh, back this part of the world. Yeah, and, you know, it and, and does a great job with it. St. Cloud, we were a part of, yeah. uh, knocked it out of the park. And I think every year it gets a little bit better because you learn from the people before you. Um, but really, and they're going to do yeah, I, I would imagine that people have to be spread out quite a bit just because of hotel rooms and facilities, <laughs> but um, they're going to do it. And I would imagine that the planning isn't isn't uh, something that started last week. Before we let you go, um, you've said the, the seating meeting is on Saturday morning. What is your – like, so you get w – w tell us for what you – you seed all eight teams, or how does that work for you as a coach? Yeah, that, that's great. So after – from the state high school league um and we just have to submit our seeds by uh, 8 a.m tomorrow morning yep. so it's it's a quick you just go in and it's about as simple of a form as you can fill out and then uh they tabulate the results and uh you'd like to think whatever we say is what goes but who knows what happens behind the smoke and mirrors um but but morning okay. once they tabulate that and they go um and then they they announce the results and then there's a period about conference calls with the different tv personalities and um the state high school league. Um, it's it's been, and then we just prepare for that first game. So we'll hopefully get some film on whoever we play, and start to prepare as best we can. It's great to see you, man. Thanks so much for the time. Congratulations on another win, and uh, good luck next week. If I don't talk to you beforehand, okay? All right. Win over Rozo last night to win a fifth consecutive eight double A championship. And we will find out who they play and when they play uh, coming up uh, tomorrow at the state hockey tournament. The double-A portion begins on Thursday. We're due for a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap up our one. Brad Schlossman around the bend in our second hour. We'll do that on a busy Friday on this hot mic. We're back right after this. Wrapping up here, our first hour. Brad lost me around the bend here. I haven't heard that part of the track. I like that. Um, yesterday, beyond the Lindsey Whalen news, the Summit League put out its all-conference awards. There, it's not going to be surprising. Um, on the men's side, Max Asmus was the player of the year for Moral Roberts. I'm going to tell you all right now, I did not vote for Max Asmus. I voted for Grant Nelson. And if you want to call me a homer, that's fine. I'll, I'll stand here, and I, I I debated with Cole Pack. I'll debate with anybody. I thought, I thought Nelson earned it by, if you take him off, the Bison, which finished third, NDSU probably finishes eighth or ninth. I know you can't do that, but that's that's how I how I judge it. I'm player of the year. Trenton Masner on the first team. Zeke Mayo from South Dakota State. Nelson was there. Andrew Rohde is just a stud. He's a freshman from St. Thomas. And Connor Vanover, the 7'5 guy from Oral Roberts, also made the uh, the first team. 
The sixth man of the year went to UND's Matt Norman. That's the third year in a row, by the way. UND has won an individual award. The last two years, they've had the freshman of the year, Paul Bruns, last year before he transferred to South Dakota. And now Norman wins the uh, the sixth man of the year. Meanwhile, on the women's side, no surprise there. Maya Sellen was the player of the year. I did vote for her um, for player of the year. The rest of the first team was made up of Heaven Hamling from NDSU, Casey Barovich from UND, Grace Larkins, who was a stud for South Dakota, Tears of Moore from Oral Roberts, and Hannah Cooper from Oral Roberts also on the first team. The Bison did have an individual award. That went to L. Evans. That was probably the slam dunk award of the year as freshman of the year in the Summit League. First Bison to do that in program history. Started 17 of 18 league games. Scored double digits in 15 of 17 starts. 23 points, which is a career high on the road win at Kansas City. First career double-double came at Omaha and a loss there, 16 points and 15 rebounds. In league games, she averaged 13, excuse me, 14 points, 14 points, five rebounds, and one assist during league play. This was a slam dunk, and frankly, I'm a little surprised she didn't make the second team. She got honorable mention. The second team on the women's side went Peyton Burkhardt, Paige Meyer from South Dakota State, Maggie Negar from St. Thomas, Elena Pilacuda from Omaha, and Haley Timmer from South Dakota State. I would have put Evans over Timmer on the second team. I did in my ballot. Honorable mention was Anna Dietz from Western, L. Evans, Michaela Manette, who was the defensive player of the year from Denver, Emma Smith, standout freshman from Denver, and Elise Stafford uh, from Kansas City who we did not see in the last time the Bison played the Ruse. Bowden Scunberg was honorable mention as well on the men's side. I thought I voted him second team as well. Um, I thought he had played well enough, especially in conference play, to earn uh, that mantle. But that was the uh, the breakdown of the all-conference awards. And as we mentioned, the Summer League Tournament officially tips off later today in a couple hours' time in Sioux Falls with the first women's game. The UND men play tonight against Omaha in the first men's game. The winner of that will get Oral Roberts coming up uh, Saturday night. We'll take a break. We come back. Brad Schlossman will join us. We'll start Hour 2. A lot of hockey chatter as we're into the final week of the regular season. What UND has in front of them. It's a road journey that begins for the Fighting Hawks after this weekend. Hour 2 of Hot Mike on a Friday is back after this. This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. Time to chat some hockey. Shot score! North Dakota wins! The best college hockey writer in the country is on deck. North Dakota, champions of the college hockey world. Here's Brad Schlossman. It is a Friday in March, which means it's not just basketball. There's plenty of hockey chatter. We just had John Ammerman on, the head coach of the Moorhead Spuds, who are heading back to state as Brad Schlossman joins us. He was in uh, Thief River last night, one of my all-time great hockey venues, to see the 8A championship be decided as Warroad won again as they beat East Grand Forks and are heading back to the Minnesota State Hockey Tournament representing Section 8A, and I know you wrote about this. You can read it about it in the Herald. I read it last night on, on Jason Shogaby's decision to come back and play another year. This was why, Brad, to get the, back to the XL Energy Center. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. It, it feels like there are a lot of parallels to, uh, you know, TJ Oshie's senior year, mm-hmm. and uh, TJ decided to come back, and, uh, and, and it wasn't just TJ. They were a group of friends. You know, I'm I'm sure Hampton Slikinski could be playing junior hockey somewhere this year. Uh, he'll be playing for Fargo next year. Um, you know, Carson Pilgrim maybe had an opportunity to, and and Jason Chagabay certainly did. Uh, Green Bay really wanted him this year. He had a great start there, and uh, they all decided to go back mm-hmm. and try to uh, uh, not only get to state but to win it. And uh, Oshi senior year, they did do that. They they won it and they had an undefeated season. And now here's Shagabe, uh, you know, he surpasses Oshi's scoring mark this year. They're still undefeated. Man. Now they're heading to state with a chance to win it. And uh, they would be world's first boys state title 
since TJ senior year wow. in 2005. So, um, you know, it's uh, uh, they have a great chance to do it. Number one with a bullet, they're going to be the top seed when they get to the XL Energy Center. That's amazing that uh, the, the parallels there and also the fact that they haven't won it since Oshie was a high school player. Yeah. That You shake your head at that stat. They've had a lot of really good yeah. teams and players come through, and you know, it it's hard to win it. And 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 they they haven't since then. They've been close. Last year they were a goal away. They lost three two in the championship game to Hermantown, and now uh, we'll see if they can uh, finish it off uh, the next week and then St. Paul. We're getting deep in the weeds on this question, but I, I'm curious for his decision, Shagabe's decision to start at the USHL and go back. To high school is that a common one or is that uncommon in the in the current uh, scope of junior hockey you know I, I I would say most guys don't go back um but it's not totally unheard of I think you're starting to see some more guys uh do that pattern mm -hmm. uh, you know the the guy who very well may win in CHC rookie of the year Jackson Blake when he was a junior that's what he did he went to Chicago came back won a state title with Eden Prairie. <laughs> then he won a Clark Cup with Chicago. He awesome. scored the game-winning goal in both of their clinchers. And, um, you know, then his senior year, he was at Chicago the whole year. But he did do a, a before and after. And so there are some guys who do it. Um, I, I think Shagabay, when he went to Green Bay, he all along planned on doing it. Then things went really well in Green Bay. And I think that made the decision a little bit harder to go back uh, for him. But still... Uh, he did it, and he was, uh, you know, last night he was beaming after the game, and uh, he gets to go play down in, in the X again and, and take one more crack at winning a state title. What is his college future, I guess, in terms of what kind of player can he be at the next level? What kind of – what is he projected to be? Yeah, he's um, – you know, I, I've been trying to think of a good way to describe him. He's, he's a small guy. He's really skilled. He, he's going to have to work on his defensive game and his play away from the puck. Uh, but you just can't teach some of the skill and the hockey sense he has. He's really smart. He's a guy who will pass before he shoots, uh, which has made him a really good, uh, you know, fit with Carson Pilgrim, who can score a lot of goals. So, you know, he's going to be a guy that, you know, I think he's a top six player uh, at Minnesota Duluth. Mm. And he's a guy you're going to want to put with a goal scorer. Right now they have a freshman, Ben Steve, scoring a whole lot of goals. And uh, I bet uh, Scott Sandlin uh, is looking down the future depth <laughs> charts and thinks, you know, this might be a good guy to feed him the puck. Well, here we are. We've reached the end of the road of the regular season, and there's still plenty up for grabs here for, for UND, and we are just visiting off air that it, I mean, they could go all the way from 5th to 7th, but they are certainly, as we talked about the last time you were on two weeks ago, trending in the direction where they absolutely needed to. Is it something glaring that you've seen, or are they just, why, easy question, why are they playing better? Yeah, uh, their big issue, you know, in the first few months of the year was defensively and right. goaltending. You know, I, I thought they were giving up too many grade A chances and goaltending wasn't making enough saves. Um, you know, they had the lowest save percentage in the entire country. They were dead last uh, as a team. And since December 1st, uh, they have the, the last three months, they've dropped their goals against about a, a full goal almost Wow! from where they were the first two months. And Drew DeRitter's save percentage in the last three months, 914. That's pretty good. Yep. You win with 914 goaltending. And so things are starting to turn with him. But, you know, it, it felt like in the first half you'd get a really good performance. And then all of a sudden, boom, then came the big step back and he'd get pulled. And then there's a couple of good ones and then boom, step back. <laughs> and it feels like he's prolonged – his uh, strong play now it, it it hasn't been just one or two in a row he's he's you know improved his consistency and the team's been better around him I think too I think there's no question that they've helped him out more than they did in the first half you had a great stat I, I texted you about this because when the game ended Saturday night at CC which was officially it goes down as a <laughs> right it goes down as a zero zero tie correct? correct that was the yep. it's never happened before in the history of UND hockey not in a full game. Yeah. It's never happened in a full game. There are two other instances that happened. Number one, uh, and this is what you texted me about because you remembered <laughs> this one. In uh, 2000, uh, you know, was it eight, seven? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around, around there. there. Yep. Uh, 2007, they uh, went out to Boston College and 
with ice conditions, there was fog rising up in the arena and they couldn't really see the puck. Amazingly, both goaltenders didn't let one in <laughs> during the fog game. They, and But after 40 minutes, it got so bad. They said, you know, what, we're just calling this a 0-0 tie. Yep. And so that one lasted 40 minutes officially in the books as a 0-0 tie. In 1968, they played a playoff game and they did not play overtime. So it was a 60 minute game, but it wasn't 65. Um, so this is will go down officially in the record books as the third 0 0 tie, but it was the first one ever in a full game <laughs> that included overtime. Well, so I, I remember that BC game only because it was on TV and it looked, um, I, I can't believe this is actually happening in a college hockey environment. Like this is for real. It was amazing. Yeah, I think if if you showed some pictures to people today that, that weren't around back then, yeah. they wouldn't believe it. it. It looked like the players were floating through clouds <laughs> trying to play the game. And um, yeah, those might be two of the greatest uh, forty minute shutouts ever. Yeah. Seeing pucks through uh, clouds in the uh, out in Chestnut Hill. So I was reading your uh, what everyone's at at stake for this weekend in the league. The one matchup we know for next weekend, correct, is Denver and Miami. Everything yep. else is up for grabs still, correct? Yeah, it's it's really weird. You know, usually at this time of year, you, you kind of have either the top half or the bottom half is filtered out. Yep. So, and there may be a distinct order in those top four, bottom four. And so you're looking and saying, okay, you, you want to get to this spot because you don't want to face this team here. Well, getting to that spot doesn't mean anything right now because you could be facing any which of three combination yeah. of three teams. So it's a really weird year where, um, you know, UND wants to finish as high as they can. But it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a better matchup because they have no idea who the, the ones above them could, you know, uh, juggle out in any way. So it's it's definitely an interesting final weekend of this regular season. What we do know is UND's going on the road, and that is yeah. such an uncommon occurrence in the conference tournament, but the way they're playing, uh, it may not matter. And that's why this weekend is so critical with Omaha here to keep the momentum we were just talking about going before they know they're going to have to win. They're, they're going to have to win four games over the next two weekends to make the NCAA tournament. Is that is that accurate? You know, I, I, it's it's... You know, I think it's too tough to say 100%. Okay. I, I suspect that's the case. Uh, I, I would guess that they'll probably have to win the conference tournament to get into the NCAAs. But, uh, you know, College Hockey News puts up, uh, you know, you can run pairwise scenarios, but they don't, they don't know the first round matchups yet, so they don't have those up there. I'm not able to run those yet and see what it might do to the pairwise uh. if, say, they go and sweep St. Cloud, who's number five in the pairwise. Um, that would be a big boost. Would it be enough? I suspect no, but I also am not confident enough to come out and say that definitively. So uh, I, I think your point is the really important one, though. Uh, no matter what happens, I think you go into that tournament likely having to win it, and you really want to be playing your best. You want to have momentum. You want to have some confidence, and they've been building that the last few weeks. And so I think this is a big week to keep that going as much as, you know, positioning and everything else. I think the most important is to be playing well at this time of year and go into that tournament as a legit threat to win it. And the way they're playing right now, I think they are, you know, they need to be more consistent yeah. a little bit, um, but they're playing well enough now defensively where I think they, they, it is possible. And a few months ago, I would have said they have to win four games. They're going to implode defensively in one of them. Brad, Brad, for people that aren't super familiar with the pairwise, UND's twenty-one. What what yeah. is the cutoff spot on what what they take for the pairwise for the tournament? So there's sixteen teams that make it. Right. There's uh, there are also uh, auto bids for the conference champions. Right. There, Atlantic Hockey has nobody in the top sixteen. So we know the Atlantic Hockey champion is going to slide into yep. one of those spots. Now there are teams from every other conference in the top fifteen. So. If those teams all win their postseason tournament and get the auto bid, it is possible 15 could get in. Um, but at this point, that is the lowest, mm. um, you know, potential. You would, or you would at a minimum have to get to 15 to yeah. have a shot. And then you would need to make sure upsets don't happen, which is possible. You know, we're not talking about a league where there's only one team right. uh, in the top 
So there's some leeway that, you know, even the first or second best team could win it, and it's fine. So Omaha is 16. So if the if UND is to sweep here, where how high could they go just, just based on if they sweep Omaha this weekend? The, this weekend, I don't th- think they're going to move a whole lot. Okay. There, there, there's some – there's some – there's you know, one thing I try to tell people with the pairwise, um, every – spot is not equal there's not an equal <laughs> distance between each yeah, spot okay so you think there's the same distance between 20 and 21 as there is between five and six that's not the case mm. it's a formula and there might be a big gap between 20 and 21 it might be wider from 20 to 21 as it is from four to nine man so like sometimes you see like a team have a huge jump and people are like they only beat this team. Why is there a huge jump? Well, because they were right there. Mm-hmm. They, they were on the heels of all those teams and a couple of them lost. So they move up. So, um, yeah, so that's why I don't think they're going to move up much this week, okay. but they can push closer to those teams above them. And then in the following week is when they would potentially make Put the hammer jump. down there. Uh, last question before I let you go. Is it a reasonable consideration to have Jackson Blake in for the Hobie Baker? Is there momentum for that or not so much? It, it, it's a, you know, I, I don't see, I think it's a long shot that he could be in the top 10 this okay. year. Um, it, you know, I, I think some of the top guys are fixed in there. You know, you've got Fantilli's having a great year. Uh, Colin Graff, you got the goalies, Devin Levi and Blake Piedela, who will be in Lane Hudson on D Hughes on D. I mean, th- these guys are all kind of locks. Is he going to, you know, eke into the uh, uh, top 10? I don't think so. I think his charge came a little late. He needed more buzz early in the season. Um, but in the future, I-, I think everyone knows who he is now. <laughs> and in-, in the next few years, he's, he's going to be a, a candidate and UND fans may be able to break out their old Hobie Blaker t-shirts that they made back in 1998. How long do you think he stays? I'm, I'm just off just in your gut that before yeah, you he'll know, move on. he's uh he's not a first or second round pick. He's a fourth round pick. Yeah. Um, he's a smaller guy. There, there are areas of his game to round out before going pro, you know, working on the defensive side, he needs to get stronger. Uh, guys can lean on him a little bit right now when he can lean back on guys and protect pucks he is going to be really really good Mm. Um, and and when he continues to improve his uh, play away from the puck which he has done as this year has gone on um, he is going to be a a special player but I you know I don't see him as a short-term college guy okay he's he's a really ideal college hockey player kind of like his dad was Fun to watch. I just wa- I love watching him play in in yeah. high school and juniors, and now seeing him at the at, in mm. in college. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks always, man. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the hockey, and we'll talk again next week. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks. Good, Tom. good to see you, about Brad Schlossman from the Grand Forks Herald joins us to give us always the college hockey breakdown. UND and Omaha is double duty because they're playing in hoops tonight and in hockey. The final series of the weekend going on at the Ralph Engelston Arena. We'll take a break. We come back. King and Wingenbach will join us. Head coach of the Cheyenne Girls. They made history last night. The Mustangs will play in their first EDC conference tournament title game. We'll talk to him when Hot Mike returns right after this. Roll on a busy Friday morning here on Hot Mike, WDAYExtraInforum.com. I am uh, going to put a rumor to end here. My fleece is not to support South Dakota State or uh, even our next guest, uh, West Fargo Cheyenne. It's Mets Blue. Can we get we at least can we acknowledge that, everyone? All right. I had everybody in Frisco say, "Oh, you're wearing it's more the Jacks." I'm like, no. Plus, my wife likes it on me, so I don't care what anybody has to say. Okay. That's a perfect segue. We bring on Kenyon Wingenbach, head coach of the Cheyenne Girls. I love your team, but it's this isn't for your team. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Congratulations. Uh, the Cheyenne Girls beat Davies last night in the EDC semifinals at the Shack. First time ever. The Mustangs will play for the EDC tournament championship. When I say that, what goes through your mind? Um, relief. I think uh, <laughs> that, you know, the, the longer you, you coach, 
the more you realize that semifinal in conference is the night. Like if you can, if you can do it, I had a lot of people say like, you know, uh, you looking forward to the championship. We're just, we're going to celebrate. Like we're going to celebrate. We're going to worry about the championship later, but um, we're, we're living another week. You know, you're so right about that. You had to go and sweat a game out last year in the state qualifier game. Those teams tomorrow now, Davies and, and Red River both are expected to win, but you still have to go and play it. There is nothing like that Saturday state qualifier game, is there? Oh, for sure. And and the thing people don't realize is uh like Shanley and North tomorrow, they're coming off a high. Yep. Like they're they're they excited. Yep. And yeah, they won. They they were sky high yesterday, especially North with the big win over WAP. So uh after losing a tough game in the semis to come back, even though you're favored and none of that matters, you got to go out and execute or your season might be over. Brenna Dick went crazy last night, Kenyon, 28 points. Tell me about her performance and what you've seen from her this season. Well, this season, she's just been phenomenal. We had a, a big injury with uh, Peyton Breidenbach, our point guard. And so uh, that, that kind of shuffled a lot of things around and, and Brenna was able to play point guard, but that she's not a natural point guard. And once Peyton came back, Brenna moved back out to the wing, which seems like a little thing, but it just allows her freedom to move and, and create. And, um, uh, you know, she did an excellent job for us, but you can always tell with her when she starts shooting that like 18 foot floater, I know like I, we're good. Like we're gone. Yeah. I mean, it's she, her shot selection is something that you just can't teach. And I think I'd be an idiot if I took it away from her. So uh, just let her play, and and most of the time, good things happen. You've obviously got, as you mentioned, you've got a couple of uh, college-bound players in Maya Metcalf and Peyton Breidenbach. I mean, describe just having that kind of talent and expectations after making state. This is, I know, this is what you wanted when you took over the program, but there it is. Is there a bigger spotlight on you guys now? Uh, well, I think you know. I told our kids, our captains, especially Carson Sanders, Maya Metcalf, and Peyton Breidenbach, have been outstanding captains this year. And I told them before the year, I said, you know, last year it was kind of fool's gold a little bit. We got on a roll, but uh, I just didn't feel like we had enough in our in our system that we could compete with the top teams, to be honest with you. Mm. And then uh, we got kind of exposed at state, but it was a great experience. And I knew year two, we would be in a better spot. And I did tell them, I said, don't be surprised if we don't have the same record as last year. But once March hits, we're going to be in a better spot. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't think we would be playing zone. Like <laughs> anybody that knows me, if you watch the game, we played zone 99% of the game last night. And that 1%, I think we played three possessions of man. They scored six points. And so it was, I don't know if like your, your audience is like very statistical, but that's not good. That's not very good. So we, uh, we play zone. We, we fit to uh, our strengths. And um, I, I honestly don't, even know how to coach it. I just yell rebound a lot, and that's what they do, especially Maya. So uh, it's been awesome. It's been so much fun. How big a deal is this canyon for West Fargo uh, tomorrow night to have? It's you guys and the Packers uh, for round three tomorrow. Yeah, Coach Benson and I were uh, were texting last night. He's really excited. First time uh, for them since 2014. First time for us yep. in the championship ever. So it's going to be a great night for West Fargo. And um uh, I hope the community comes and supports at the game. It's going to be electric. Perhaps first time for West Fargo girls since 2016, which sounds crazy. And you and I were talking about this over the summer, about the level of talent just in West Fargo. I saw Horace play up close yesterday for the first time, and they're not far away from being a thorn in everybody's side, it sounds like. Yeah, I think this senior class in, the, in West Fargo, uh, between the kids that Coach Benson has and what we have, it's just such a, a deep, talented group. But then you look at the underclassmen. You know, we're starting a freshman. Uh, uh, Horace has very young group, seventh grade, <laughs> yes. eighth grade, you know. And so uh, the talent in this city is, is, is very good. Tell me, you know, uh, now you know you're going to state and you're playing in the same building next week. How much is uh, this week to get some comfortability with that, knowing the state tournament is going to be at the shack next week? Yeah, I think for us, it's it's a lot of routine. Like that's mm. we talked about that yesterday too. With you know, we play it at five thirty, so you can. Our kids went to school. We didn't get out of school. They did their whole routine just like a normal game. Uh, and on Saturday, we play at six. 
same sort of routine, you know, when you're supposed to eat and then uh, sleep it in your own bed for a state tournament. That's a huge thing that a lot of people don't understand. We don't have to deal with the hotel logistics and washing uniforms and <laughs> how to feed these kids and where to shoot around. It's it's all that stuff is taken care of. So uh, it's a big advantage to be at home. There's a this well now with West Fargo win. There's still a distinct possibility, can you know that seven of the eight teams that were there last year are going to be there this year? Is that a good thing or is that just reflective of how good everybody is this year? Yeah, I think everybody reloaded. Yeah. I think last year you look at the All State team. And it was heavy, heavy underclassmen. <laughs> now a lot of those kids are seniors, except for like the Minot kids, you know, <laughs> the young kids. But uh, for the most part, it's it's a lot of seniors this year. So we kind of knew it was going to be uh, very similar, very competitive. And that's what we've seen this year. What's uh, So you mentioned, is it laid back tomorrow night then on the sideline for yourself? Or what is it like, you know what, whatever happens, happens tomorrow. Yeah, that's not really how I'm uh, wired. So uh, I told you we would take some time to celebrate. That shuts off at some point uh, today. And so uh, we we got a good plan ready for tomorrow. And uh, our kids want to win it. And I know Coach Benson's kids want to win it. And it's going to be a very competitive game. And uh, we're not going to be happy to be there. That was last year. I felt like we were happy to be there. And, and the kids were super excited. And this year, I see just a little different drive in them. I think uh, just looking in their eyes uh, yesterday before the game, uh, I could see something a little different than I saw last year. So um, I- I'm super excited. Whatever happens tomorrow, we live another week, but we're going to we're gonna put our best foot forward. Before I let you go, you and I have talked about this. Uh, you're a big school, so I know what happened uh, last month doesn't dis- necessarily affect you directly, but you've, co- you've been in the game all your life. What do you think for three classes, what is going to be the major change for some people, bas- hardcore basketball fans to wrap their mind around next year, in your opinion? You know what? I think that ha- that ship has sailed for a lot of people. They can they can hang on to that. But I think this is going to be outstanding. I've talked to Coach uh, Klein at Devil's Lake. Uh, he's excited to be in a situation where he's not always the underdog. And he's around teams that he can compete with. Uh, every single year uh what i'm excited for are those those bottom teams uh in enrollment that that it's going to be a true class b and i think that's what people are are wanting that because that's what they remember from yesteryear Mm -hmm. 70s and 80s it's it's those teams and wait till you see that class b tournament next year and it is going to be phenomenal because there's going to be teams in there in both the boys and the girls that haven't been represented in years or ever. And those middle-class teams, now you got WAP. WAP's going to be a handful next year in that middle-class Devil's Lake with their style. I don't think anybody plays like that uh, in that. Um, And then the the upper class, it allows us to play teams in the West. So we got five games, and we can you can go to Minnesota, you can go down to Sioux Falls, you can play WDA. So it's just it's so good for the whole state. Always appreciate the time. Congratulations on the big win. I look forward to seeing you in person next week, okay? All right, sounds good. Thank you, Doc. Good to see you, bud. Kenyon Wingenbach, head coach of the Cheyenne Girls, who made history last night with their win over Davies. They'll play in the EDC Girls title game for the first time in school history. That's against West Fargo tomorrow night, 6 o'clock at the Shack. We'll take a break. We come back. It's our favorite segment of the week. It's my dad on deck with his top bets. The superior is, though, as he's called. We'll do that when Hot Mike returns on WDAY Extra and in forum.com. If that was me and you, if you luckily, you, if you'd have went with a Boston, you'd have been living in a garage. I had a Yankee hat on, of course, which I usually almost always do, but she says to me, if, if I were you, I'd take that hat off and I'd look at what I'd buy for yeah, look at the beginning. <laughs> I ain't taking my hat off. I know where I am. Yeah, yeah right. You believe anything that guy says? Because I don't. He said he was going to marry J-Lo, too, remember? <laughs> I finally told your mom. I said, there's no sense. Let's just put TVs in the room because I'm only going to wake them up anyway. So, <laughs> so that's um, how I got a television? Just... All right, it is that time on a Friday. We welcome in my dad. Joining us from lovely central New York on this Friday. You got some weather coming your way. What's up? 
Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to get about six inches tonight, I guess, but... Well, we got That's a foot. A we got a foot here the other day, so you're not going to get any sympathy here. All right. Foot, that foot ain't nothing. We get that I every know. other week. I know. <laughs> yeah, I oh. have to laugh because now you got to go out and take care of it before you just <laughs> waited for me to get done and you would leave. Now you got to take hey, care of it. There's no taking care of it when it's a freaking four foot drift in front of my driveway. All right, my son would have vanished if he walked into it. I would never have found him again. Yeah, I'm sure the wind. But the wind plays havoc oh, when you're there. God, I, unbelievable. We, we don't get that as often as you know. We just get it straight down in buckets. You our, know, our our buddy Matt Henson actually took a video of this. I should have shared it on the show. He literally just got done cleaning his driveway. And literally, out of he's taking his video. Here comes the plow. And the plow comes and... <laughs> puts it, he literally just got done. It's like they do yeah. it on purpose. You know, remember, your grandfather used to drive the I plow. I know. Yeah, I used to try and hit my mailbox every time he could. <laughs> All right. Well, so we've got some baseball games underway. I don't know if you've paid attention because they're changing the they've changed the rules on some stuff here. We showed it on Monday, the game between Boston and Atlanta that ended when the batter took too long to get set. In the batter's box, he thought actually the pitcher took too long, and the game ended on a strike called because he took too long to get set. What do you that think of part, that? That that part I love. You Keep like them that? Keep him right in that box. Keep him right in that box. They do the gloves. They do the hat. Get in there and hit the ball. <laughs> I love that part of it. What part don't you like? Well, it's I don't. It's we'll wait and see. That's all. I just don't. <sighs> I know they're trying to shorten the game, but, you know, baseball's baseball. It is what it is, but I don't know. Eric, we'll see. Eric just said. I he, love the part they got to get in there. And yeah. got to get in there and play. I'm with you I'm there. All for yeah, it. I'm, yeah. I'm all for that. The clock is different. That's, and when you, and how long you have to pitch if a guy's on base, that's going to, that's going to take some getting used I'm to. I'm waiting to see this clown from Atlanta, see what he does. You know, what's his name? Acura or Kua or whatever it is. Acuna. He's, he's a, Acuna. Yeah, he's a yeah. showboater up there, man. <laughs> In the old days, he'd have been beamed every time up. <laughs> Eric Bruss brought up a great point. You're you're not going to love it when it kills the Yankees for a game. Then you're going to freak out. So well, he's well, exactly right. Well, I see how that goes, but <laughs> I'm sure Booney will have him right on top of all that. You know how that is. You well, how you like my hat. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Is that a new hat? Yeah, yeah, your mom gave it to me. It used to be your grandpa. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, I like it. Um, That's I am, what I need more hats. Yeah, right. I am interested though for the games are going by light speed now. Two hours, fifteen minutes. Two hours, twenty minutes. I mean, if if that if that's what they're worried about, and they are, then this is a marked improvement. I I don't know if it's going to happen in the regular season, wow. but it's that's lightning. Holy cow! Well, that's fine. Why well, wouldn't it happen in the regular season? That's a rule now, right? It is. It just I'm I don't know if there's yeah, still by the rules. They got longer are TV the, are commercials. The commercials gonna have a pitch count? <laughs> no, it, it comes in the money. We're no. not gonna have a pitch count on that. But that's I mean you know that how often how honestly how often did you make it to an end of a Yankee game last year? Uh, out of out of ten, how many would you say? Six, seven. Man, nah, that'd be a lot. Five, five, <laughs> like half. Yeah, maybe maybe half. Of okay, because they do go. Especially right. if they're playing Boston. Exactly. So they, they, yeah. They're three and a half hour baseball games that are played in May <laughs> and June. Yeah. That I mean, that just that no one has the attention span for that anymore. As much as I, you and I both love it, no one's going to stick around and watch three and a half hours right. of that. You know. But if, when you're paying that kind of money for a game, you know, you know, and that, next thing you know, it's over with. You know. <laughs> I mean, remember the Mets game we went to? They played, I think it was San it was a, Diego, right? It was. It was San Diego yeah, and the Mets. It was the fastest was a, game ever. <laughs> it yeah. was a one nothing game that got over yeah. in a little over two hours. But I that, mean, that was, wow. But that, that was, was the time I paid the usher to yes. sit right down close. Yeah. yeah. That was also I'm not that, that was 30 years ago, big boy. The game is the game is completely yeah. different now. It's completely different, you know? I, I love the I love the shift thing too. Get him back the way it's supposed to be. You know, that shift, three guys on one side, yeah. that's crazy. He said shift there, everybody, by the way. Shift is yes, what he I said. Yes, I did, shift. <laughs> that's what he said. Well, I made sure. But here's the thing. Why, hit the ball the other way. Just take, go the well, other way. 
It's the best thing they could have done is just keep button the ball. They yeah. never would. Yeah, they wouldn't do you that. Know, that, was no. a, that was an easy base set. That they wouldn't true. do it. So now, but now I'm glad they changed it. Anyway. Yeah, that is true. So we'll see. Yeah. It's uh, it's underway there. NASCAR weekend is in Vegas. I can't. This is the week where you're probably just uh, crawling all over yourself, right? You but, know what? but you've I been guess, there, right? Oh yeah, I've been. Yeah. I did something last week I'd never been able to do, and I ended up making money. Oh, and here I we go. Kyle Busch, because he was in a Chevy. He's in a Chevy now, so I could finally bet him. <laughs> and didn't he go ahead and win? That's uh, unbelievable. So, boy, that's a double whammy for you, because you don't like yeah. him. So then he ended up winning the race. That's just, that's got to drive me crazy. He was in crazy. a Chevy, uh, so I put, I put money on him, and didn't he win? I'm going <laughs> to do it again this week, because this is fa- this is home track. Eric, Eric just said that uh, Bush is the whiniest NASCAR driver out there. Is that accurate, or is there somebody the else? Whiniest yes. and winningest. It's <laughs> a good combo. So, I guess, right? it, goes, it goes right with it. So kind they're in, like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So, but he ain't the winningest. <laughs> do you can we can we bet yet on uh, your betting sites of where he's going to play next year? Is that is that up yet or no? No, I no. haven't seen anything on that. He's not going anywhere. He's doing the same thing he does every year. I don't like it here. I don't like it here. But then he comes right back. So he can lose in the playoffs. That's all it's about. I don't want him in Green New York. Bay's, I admit it to so. Green Bay Smart, they'll ship him to the Jets and get it over. He's not going. I don't want him in the Jets. I don't want that. I had somebody ask me that yesterday. I said, no. No way. Why, no why wouldn't you want him? You, I want Garoppolo. I will take Garoppolo right now over Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is going to be play for one year. He's done. Garoppolo so got- can play eight games and be done because <laughs> that's what usually happens to him. Eight or nine games and he's done. <sighs> I don't know. It's going to be should be an interesting year with Trey, though. Yeah, the whole thing. Well, San Francisco's got uh, got some decisions to make there. Plus, Purdy still hasn't had his surgery yet either, so I don't know. Yeah, what's the hold up with that? He had, he's, he's, had, he's, he's had swelling in his elbow, so they couldn't do the surgery until the swelling goes down. So That's too bad that kid had it made. But. That's very true on that. All right, you got some bets for us that you're laying out tonight to tell everybody? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give I got a get some winners? smorgasbord. Okay. Smorgasbord I'm going to try here. Okay. All right, what do you got for us this week? All right, the NBA, I'm going to take – this is one parley now, right? Okay. I'm taking Boston and the Knicks, <laughs> okay. and then I'm putting um, Montreal. Oh, we're in the N- now we're in the hockey. NHL. Now we're in the NHL. Okay, all right. I'm putting them all on the same bet, Montreal <laughs> under, to beat the Ducks. <laughs> That's one bet I'm making. Okay. All right. Hold on, let me repeat that one. You got the So this is the Knicks and the Celtics to win straight up, you're saying? Yep. Okay, and then Montreal to beat Anaheim and the under on that, which is six. Okay. Right. That's okay. a fourteen. That's a fourteen parley right there. <laughs> Ten should get me about sixty. There or you so. go. All right. All right. All right. And Mac action. I'm taking some college Mac action. <laughs> Ohio's playing Bowling Green. This is men's basketball. Take, you're taking. All right. We're in back here. I'm taking yep. the over. Oh, the over one fifty six. <laughs> The last time they played, it was 170. So, <laughs> and I'm putting New Mexico with that minus two. Oh, okay. And Vegas in hockey to go over. <laughs> Those are Boy, my two pounds. You are all over the place there. Holy well, cow. That's what's fun, man. You can throw them all in together. And now you got to, that's why I have the computer, the bug, the, my laptop, computer, TV, all going at once. And I love it. You did not bet the bison here. Are you going to do that this weekend or what here? What are you going to yeah, do? They weren't up on the board yet, so I imagine right. they'll be tomorrow probably. When's their first game? The bison men play Sunday night, so probably tomorrow, I'd imagine, right, that that'll go up? Yeah. That'll, yeah. that'll be it probably, probably tomorrow night. I don't yeah. know. I, I don't think you're going to make any money betting on Oral Roberts because they're the overwhelming favorite to win it on the men's side, so I don't know who you get. Uh, well, it's the only way you can do it there is bet the over and under right. gives you a better better as and combine them with somebody that you know might not win but All you right. don't know i mean it's hard to <laughs> hard to say what vegas is going to do with you're, those you're boys. just ask people to pay attention to a max ohio and who i don't even know who's who ohio and bowling green is yeah that- <laughs> that's going to be a good one tonight <laughs> gotta bet the over the last order. time they i can't believe vegas has got it yeah. 156 <laughs> well well, yeah, that's that's for a college basketball game. That's outrageously high. So.
So that's, yeah, but these two teams last time uh, just just put it up. Neither one of them play defense. They I, just throw up the three. There's man. another thing I just learned about my dad. He's a great action men's basketball mind. I had no idea that well, he knew we'll, about it. So. We'll see how it turns out. All righty. There's his best bets of the weekend. You have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you when I'm in Sioux Falls. All right. All right, man. I look forward to it. Right. I love you. I love you too. Time. Have Be a great careful. weekend. There he goes. My dad wrapping up our week here. Those are his best bet. I don't even know where he was at. He bet the Montreal Canadiens and the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah, I don't even know if he knew that Anaheim had a hockey team prior to putting a bet on it, but there it is uh, for our best bets of the weekend. We'll take our final break. We'll come back. We'll wrap up our show, get you ready for everything we have coming up tonight on WDAY, WDAY Extra. Got a couple emails we'll catch up on as well. And say so long after this on Hot Mike on WDAY Extra, Inforum.com. We have reached the end of the road for this week here on our show. Thanks so much for joining us this entire week. Had a great lineup of guests. A reminder, we will be back with you Monday in Sioux Falls at the Summit League Basketball Tournament. Excited about that. Summit League Commissioner Josh Fenton will join us. Our usual cavalcade of guests will be there uh, with us on Monday. And we will be in Sioux Falls for as long as uh, the Bison teams are there. Uh, that depends on having to see how things go. We could be back in studio by Tuesday or uh, potentially down there another day. So um, excited about that. Uh, the jinx is full in effect. I have not been in Sioux Falls for the Summer League Basketball Tournament in 11 years. The last time I was there was 2012. So it's been a little bit, but uh, excited to get down there uh, for our show coming up on Monday. We'll have uh, plenty of coverage online and on television starting tomorrow for the Bison Women Play at 6. This just came in. We talked about this uh, last month. It has now been officially proposed by uh, the NCAA Football Rules Committee. Has finalized three rules to be voted upon. One is the game clock to continue to run after a first down is gained. Currently, the game clock stops when a first down is gained, and the clock restarts when the offense is awarded a first down. The game clock will continue to be stopped when a first down is gained during the until. Uh, during the last two minutes of either half. Teams would be prohibited from calling consecutive timeouts. And then penalties at the end of the first and the third quarter would carry over and be enforced on the first play of the next quarter. This will be uh, voted on by the NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Panel. A lot of words there on April the 20th. So, thankfully, the incomplete pass one and the clock keeps running, that one hit the bricks, which it should have, because that one was dumb. Uh, But these other ones are likely going to pass, and I would imagine we're going to have a potentially quicker football games coming this uh, fall. Troy Dannon, the athletic director at Tulane, tells The Athletic he imagines that uh, this could uh, carve the game down by 7 to 10 plays. That could be monumental in a game. So I'd be curious, and we'll... uh, Get some reaction on this over the next few days and uh, weeks. But April 20th will be the uh, day this is voted upon uh, for the rule changes there. A couple of emails come into the show. Dom, thanks for all the great coverage of North Dakota High School Sports by WDAY. Has there been any discussion on expanding the number of tournament days in order to provide opportunity for more coverage? Instead of the usual Thursday, Friday, Saturday games, that the new Class B play Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, have the new Class A play Thursday, Friday, Sunday. This will make Thursday being the only day when both brackets having games played. Um, Appreciate the email. I would tell you from a television perspective, we would be in favor of that. Specifically the Wednesday to Saturday bit. Um, The high school association has no appetite for that. I can tell you that right now. Um, With Wednesday being a church night, I don't think they want anything to do with that. They have expressed to us about interest in going to Sunday. You'll remember two years ago during the COVID year that the Class A tournament, they had the uh, boys play Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and the girls went Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so the quarterfinals were not overlapping. Um, I don't think we're real fans of going on Sunday because of travel, of getting to the next event. Um, I hope that's something that each side can have some leeway on, to the emailer's point, because they're... 
Next year, it's it's not going to be this way. They're going to be playing at the same time, but potentially down the road, hopefully there's flexibility here that we can do that. It's a great email and something I, I've been campaigning for, but Wednesday seems like it's a no-go uh, on the high school association side of things. Let's get you ready for what to watch before we say so long here on this Friday morning. Reminder, the girls' Class B semifinals tonight on WDAY 6.30 begins our coverage of the Final Four, which should be some great games there. UND and Omaha coming up tonight, 6 o'clock on Midco from the Summit League Basketball Tournament. And the Timberwolves play the LeBron-less Lakers, 9.30 on Valley Sports North. We got a roll. Thanks to our guests, to John Ammerman, Branch Lossman, Kenya Wingenbach, of course, to my dad. If you missed any of our show, you can podcast it later today at Inforum.com. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you Monday from Sioux Falls on Hot Mike on WDAY Extra.